Hello everyone and welcome to a new episode. If you're expecting to become a physician of residence in Canada and you're wondering how much physicians as resident they make in the Canadian healthcare system, this video is for you. If you are a medical student or you're an international medical graduate wondering on how much money you're going to make during your residency, stay tuned. Medical residency is a very crucial part in the development of a physician, but also at the same time it could put some financial strains on you because you're not making full salary as a physician. In this video, we're going to talk about what are the factors that can affect your income and what are the general expenses. Medical residency in Canada varies between two years up to seven or eight or nine years. It truly really depends on what type of residency you are doing. But in general, it usually varies between two years to five years. There are several factors that affect how much money you make, but one of the most important factors is the location of the program. Resident salary in Canada ranges between 60,000 to 70,000 and it increases as you become more senior and you become more advanced in your training. But it's all online. To check how much resident make, it really depends on the province and you can check the CARMS website here and you can go to their website and they mention each province and what are the yearly salary of a resident before taxes so you can explore that on your own. I'm from Ontario so I can talk about how much residents make in Ontario. If you look here, you can notice that as a first year resident, as of July of 2022, you make around 62,000. And then you become more senior, you make around 67. And in your third year, you make around 72. So every year, your salary is going to increase. And also there are several factors that can affect this, like the inflation. But also at the same time, as more money you make, you're going to pay more taxes. The numbers here are mainly your salary before tax, and then you have to pay tax. And that percentage varies between 5% to 10%, because as you notice, your maximum is go you are going to make, it's around $90,000 to $100,000, and that's around like PGY-8 or PGY-9, and we're gonna talk more about in details, what does that mean? And then on top of that, we sometimes are on call. In Ontario, for example, we do between five to seven calls in a month. What does that mean? Being on call means you are in the hospital and you are available to see patients, to see consults after normal working hours. <laughs> what does normal working hours mean? Normal working hours are anywhere between eight to five. For example, let's say I'm on call today for medicine. I go to my shift, which starts around eight and I finish at five. But at five, I don't come back home like normal human beings do. No, I stay in the hospital and I do more work. So I'm available to see patients and see more consults. And I work from 5 p.m. until the next day around 7 or 8 a.m. If I'm lucky, I usually have time to sleep. But usually if you're on a busy rotation, you might not sleep. So this is called cold shift. It is tiring, but most of the learning happens when you're on call. Sometimes you are lucky and you get some sleep and sometimes it's busy and you don't sleep. So when you do this call shift, you get paid an extra money on top of what you are making. For example, if you're on call during a regular day, you make around $120. And then if you're on call on a weekend, you make around $140. So that's for a single shift. In a month, if you do four or five shifts of a regular day call, so you're just gonna multiply that number by 128 or whatever number it is during your year of residency. There are other types of call, which is known as home call, like some services like hematology, for example, benign hematology. I don't need to stay in the hospital because usually it's not busy. So you're allowed to come home and stay in your place. But if needed, they might call you and ask you to see a patient. Now, let's go back and talk, what is this PGY level? So PGY, as you sign the table, means postgraduate year. Any residency, at least it's going to be two years. For example, family medicine here in Canada, in Ontario, it's around two years. So you finish your four years of medical school, or if you're an international medical graduate, you graduate from medical school and you do residency, and that residency is for two years. And after those two years, you become an independent physician. Remember, in this video, we're not talking about the salary of an independent physician. We're talking about the salary of a resident, which is a completely different. There is a huge gap between your salary as a resident 
and yourself as an independent physician. There are some residencies that require more time. For example, internal medicine, it's three years, and some people choose to do a fellowship. So you might do two years of an extra fellowship, like oncology. So that's combined is five years. And sometimes people choose to do another fellowship. For example, they might do breast cancer fellowship in oncology so that's an extra year so that's combined is a six years so you did three years of internal medicine two years of oncology one year of breast cancer but there are also other ways to increase your and prolong your training for example some people might choose to do internal medicine so that's three years and they might choose to do cardiology so that's another three years so that's six years and then on top of that they might do interventional so that's one year and then they might do two years of critical care so that's around nine years yes the training is long but people do what they love and it really depends on what you want to do and how you want your practice to look like in the future so beyond your basic income as a resident and what you make during the cold shift you also might qualify for insurance and that helps a lot for example in ontario we have insurance that covers dental health and other types of health like if i want to go to the optometrist i have a specific amount of money for me that I can use for an optometrist. If you're gonna buy eyeglasses, for example, I have a specific amount of money I can use to buy eyeglasses within a year or within two years. So there are other types of benefits and insurance that helps me also to cover my expenses. I went this year to my dentist several times and my insurance covered all my visits and that helped because if I didn't have that insurance, I would pay maybe thousands of dollars. So. We have the basic income, we have the call stipend, and we have the insurance. And you can check all this on the PARO website here. But wait a minute, what is PARO? PARO means the Professional Association of Residents of Ontario. Residency programs here in Canada are very well regulated. And usually each province, they have a resident association. And the resident association usually talks to the hospital and other regulatory bodies in that province and they decide how much money residents should make and how much vacation time they are allowed and also other benefits. That's something that is not usually present in the US. Here we have less medical schools in Canada and they are very well regulated. And now let's talk about expenses. The major expense for you during your residency is, drums please, housing. So how much you spend on your place varies a lot. It can go anywhere between 800 to 3,500. It depends on where you live, which city, who do you live with, and if you rent or you buy. For example, an apartment rent in Kingston is much cheaper than apartment rent in Toronto or Vancouver. And if you rent, you're not going to pay other expenses like insurance, like tax on your property. Usually you pay extra insurance and extra tax if you buy. And if you live alone, you're going to pay more when compared if you live with someone else. So as you notice, there are lots of things related to how much you pay on your place where you live. But that being said, let me give you an advice here. Although housing is one of the major expenses, I think it's the most important. It is the most important. I can't emphasize this enough. Initially, when I moved to Ottawa, I used to live in the suburbs. When I imagined residency, I wanted to move into the city. I really didn't know what to look for when I rent a place. So I went and I looked for something cheap. And I rented this place that was the worst thing I've ever done in my life. After a month, I noticed that it wasn't that clean and I spent one of the worst years in my life in that place. I didn't know when I finished that year so I can move. And this is something important. Once you rent a place, you're bound to that place for a whole year. That's usually how things go here in Canada. I didn't like the place and I started looking for other places. And then I moved to this really nice place. Let me show you some pictures here. They have a nice gym, they have a nice swimming pool and it's, pr it's pretty brand new building. Although I pay more, I almost pay the double, but it is one of the best expenses I ever did. Why? Because when you're a resident, you're gonna work long hours. And especially if you are on call, when you're on call, you go to the hospital, you might work straight for 24 to 26 hours. When you come back home, you need to rest. 
You need to relax, you need to sleep, you need somewhere nice and clean to make your food and to enjoy your time. So you need to invest in a nicer place that is clean, that is friendly to walking, biking, hiking, whatever activity you like, and you can do other things. That, for example, here in my apartment, if I stayed the entire week in my apartment building, I wouldn't say no. There's a gym, there's a swimming pool, there's a guest room, and there is a patio outside, which is really nice in the summer. So look into those things when you rent a place. You need to be comfortable. At the same time, my apartment building is close to other amenities, like there is a gym, there is a grocery store. These are very important factors because during your residency, you don't have time to commute to go to the grocery store. You don't have time to spend 30 minutes to go to the gym. If there is a gym close to your place, if there's a grocery store close to your place, this will save you huge amount of time. Now let's talk about another important expense, which is food. Again, how much you spend on the food varies a lot. It can go anywhere between $300 to $700 per person. It depends on several factors. First, where you live. Second, where you eat. If you are a person who likes to go outside and enjoy a dinner outside, you're going to spend more versus if you like to cook at your place. But I truly believe that in residency, it's important to go out and see people and make friendships. The years are very short and residency suddenly ends. So it's never wrong to go out and enjoy time with friends, have a meal with them, build friendships, build relationships, and build moments that you're gonna remember until the end of your life. Now let's talk about another expense, which is transportation. Again, how much you spend on transportation varies a lot, and it depends on, you guessed it, depends on where you live and what, the, what type of car you drive. For example, if you live in Toronto, you might not buy a car, you will only use the public transportation. I remember when I was in Toronto, I met a resident who never bought a car in his life. He used the public transportation, the subways, in his medical school and his residency. On the other hand, if you like, if you live in cities like Ottawa, where I live right now, you will need a car because it's much more easier because the public transportation is not the best. And how much car costs? It depends on several factors. It depends if you buy the car or you lease the car or you finance the car. Those are three different options. And it depends if it's a new car or it depends if it's an old car. On top of that, you're gonna pay for car insurance and gas. For example, from my real life, I can tell you that my car costs me around $400 a month. So that includes the car insurance, the car finance, and what I pay for gas. As you can notice, the expenses can sometimes be expensive. Another important expense is how much you pay on communication. That includes your cell phone plan, your phone, and the home internet. And that varies between $50 sometimes to $150 to $200. And it depends on where you live and what type of service provider you are with. And whenever you start residency, always check with the hospital that you work in because sometimes they might have plans where it is cheaper for their employees. So always ask. For example, in my place, I pay around $55 to $60 for my home internet and I pay around $50 to $65 for my own cell phone plan. Finally, there are other expenses that it really depends on your personal situation, like entertainment, clothing, daycare if you have kids, travel, it truly really varies. But the previous expenses are the major one that usually everyone pays for. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope it helps someone who is starting their residency. If you have any questions about residency, about medicine in Canada, please leave it in the comments below and feel free to email me as well.